Today I'm going to show you the 5 steps that helped me break into cybersecurity and become a professional ethical hacker. And none of these steps is learning the basics or get all these certifications because you probably already know that. I'm actually going to give you practical advice for you to create your own path into cybersecurity, more specifically into ethical hacking. Also, make sure you stick to the end for a bonus tip and without further ado, let's dive into it. I think you would be surprised with the amount of messages I get from people asking what should I do to get my first opportunity in cybersecurity? Is this certification worth it or should I do this course? Should I go for this academy or bootcamp? And honestly, I cannot blame them because I used to have the same exact questions. Now, in my opinion, I think people should start in the opposite way. And what I mean by that is if you want to get into cybersecurity, first, you have to define what is your end goal because Wanting to work in cybersecurity is too vague to be a goal because there's so many things you can do. And so when you actually decide what's your end goal, then you can create a reverse path and start from the beginning. And let me give you an example. If you want to become an ethical hacker or a penetration tester, maybe if you start studying other people's journeys, like what did this guy do to get into this position? And this is something that I did a lot. I used to study LinkedIn for a living. I used to go to ethical hacking uh, profiles and see what certifications they had and what courses they did and what were the tools that they were using. And then what I also did was to pay attention to job descriptions, because if you start reading those job descriptions and studying these profiles, you'll start to see some similarities. And then you can find these patterns and know that, well, this course or this certification or this skill or these tools are very repetitive in both profiles and job descriptions. So these must be extremely necessary. And then if you combine it with some extra research on the topics, I'm sure you will be able to create those patterns and help you create your own path as well. But just a little reminder, I mean, some of those job descriptions look like a complete shopping list. I, I don't even know how to describe it. I mean, you can see some of the junior job opportunities. They have these crazy requirements. Here you have to use your common sense, okay? Some of those job descriptions are made by HR consultants and by people that don't really have the technical knowledge to see what really makes sense or not. And so they are really, really trying to find the best candidate possible. And in some cases, some of those requirements won't be a must have. So just keep that in mind as well. To summarize this first step, in order for you to create your own path, you must start by defining your target, your end goal. And then you can start by studying people that have reached your goal before to see how they did it. While you're also studying job descriptions to get these little hints to guide you in the right direction towards your end goal. And if you actually do this and you start seeing the whole picture, you'll be surprised by how clear things will become. If you want to become an ethical hacker, that basically means that you're aiming for an offensive security role like penetration testing or red teaming or a bug bounty hunter and so forth. And that was the first step, right? By knowing where you want to be, you can actually create a specific path for you in order to get there. Now, this second step is very important and you got to be brutally honest with yourself because this is a hyper competitive field. And unfortunately, I see a lot of people either giving up or trying to skip very important and fundamental steps once they realize the amount of time and effort needed in order to reach these goals. And that's where you start seeing these questions like, what is the best certification? Like, what is the secret sauce? What is the cheat code that would get me there faster? And you can take my case, for example. I mean, it took me one year of working full time in IT while studying for my master's degree, while doing a bunch of courses and certifications before I even got my first cybersecurity security job interview. And you know what happened? After that interview, I actually got the job. And I like to think that was because I was focused on my preparation and not on cheating the system and getting there faster per se. So when I say that preparation is key, here's what I mean. You just have to write down your goals, you have to give yourself deadlines, and then you have to focus on the things that you can control, which is your work ethic and your networking efforts as well, which brings us to the next step. Effective networking is all about taking the concept of networking and actually achieving something meaningful and tangible with it. Because you don't want to start spamming and bugging people with like vague questions and especially lazy questions. Please don't do that. And I know a lot of people say there's no stupid question, but let me tell you, there are lazy questions. And you want an example? I can give it to you. <laughs> 
Let's just say you're going to reach out to a senior cybersecurity professional and you're going to ask him, hey, what is the best certification for me to start in cybersecurity? Keep in mind that these people are busy. They are busy with their own stuff. They have their own career, their own goals. And if they are taking the time of their lives to help you, it would help them a lot if they had like a specific like question because the best certification to get into cybersecurity, that's so vague, you know what I mean? Like there's so many things, even if he knows that you want to become a penetration tester or an offensive security professional, you can, I mean, your end goal might be to become an exploit developer, or you might want to be a mobile application security expert, or I, I mean, there's so many things, right? So if you actually give some context to your question, and if you actually provide some details in what you want to achieve, like what's your end goal? What is your main target? What do you want to really accomplish? That will help people a lot trying to help you. So it's your job to ask better questions. And don't get me wrong, I, I used to ask those questions a lot as well, but I realized that everyone would answer me the same thing. Everyone would say, it depends. And that answer is very vague as well. So if you give them a very vague question, they will provide you with a very vague answer as well. So that's not what you want because you're using your time to ask for advice and people are using their time to provide you with their advice. And so you want to make sure that is effective and in order to do so again it's your job to make the best questions and to go straight to the point giving them the details they need in order to help you in the best way and the final thing on networking is do you have people close to you that are related to the field. I mean, if you're studying, does your school have a capture the flag team or a cybersecurity department? Can you get in touch with them? Can you talk with them? Let's say you're already working at a company, I mean, doing IT stuff, or it doesn't really matter. Does your company have a cybersecurity department? Can you reach out to them? Can you go and have lunch or go for a coffee and just try to be in touch with these people, that will be tremendously useful. When I was working in IT, I was doing quality assurance automation and I wanted to meet the cybersecurity guy so bad. I used to be, I mean, I, I think I was even annoying sometimes because I was always bugging them, trying to, I mean, ask questions and like be with them and trying to get as much knowledge from them as possible and trying to understand how to get into the field but yeah you might think that you have to reach out to like the most senior chief information security officer not at all i mean just reach out to people that are already working in the field and they will be able to share knowledge and experiences with you that will be tremendously helpful at this stage, if you're just starting out, one of the most important things you can do is getting yourself exposed to the field as much as possible. If you enjoy listening to podcasts, find a good cybersecurity podcast. If you enjoy learning things by watching videos, do some research, find some good cybersecurity content creators. I mean, there's a lot of them. And even if you just want to lay back, relax and read a book, there's literally thousands of great cybersecurity books that you can learn from. My point is, if you know exactly what you want to achieve, the world becomes your library. And this was actually said by Kobe Bryant before he passed away. So if you know where you're going and you immerse yourself in, you have no other choice but to learn and get better at it. Another thing you should take into consideration is you don't want to just consume content. You want to be practical. You want to be proactive as well. And so create something. I mean, a blog where you can share your journey, or a GitHub repository where you can upload and share your scripts or your little projects while you're studying and preparing for that one opportunity. Remember, step number two, preparation is key. And all of these things will set you apart from your competition. And trust me, if you're being considered for a job, these things might be the difference makers between you getting the job or not. So keep that in mind. You also got to be very selective with what you choose to engage on because nothing is free. And you might be asking, didn't you just say that I should immerse myself? Well, yes, but two things can be true, right? Think about this. Even the things that you might consider to be free, like projects, courses or workshops, those will also take your time and energy, which are limited resources. And so while it is important to immerse yourself in, it's also very important for you to be selective. Because you don't want to burn out before even starting on this field. And trust me, cybersecurity field is considered to be one of the areas where people burn out the most because it's a lot. <laughs> and you don't want to end up having like 
a dozen expired certification vouchers or 100 new Udemy courses that you didn't even had the time to start with. All of that because you overestimate the things you could actually do in a certain amount of time. And trust me, I'm talking from personal experience. I always think that future David is like superhuman. I mean, three certifications, one master thesis, moving to a different country, while having a family and working full time in just six months, sure, no problem. Future David will handle it. And well, that's not how life works, right? Because life happens and things change and priorities change and you got to adapt to those changes. Let's say you're doing a certification and doing a bunch of stuff at the same time. And now you have little time to prepare for the exam because you've been being so busy with the other stuff that now you're watching the certification course materials in uh, three times speed because you have to really get through those materials you have to study faster and you're trying to memorize all the concepts and you don't even have the time to comprehend and to really understand what's happening behind the scenes and how things work under the hood and that's not the learning experience you're going for anything you're doing you want to get the best experience experience out of it. So if you're doing a certification, focus on that. If you have to manage other stuff as well, if you're studying, if you're working, do the best as you can. But please, the philosophy that you want to go with is you want to find your priorities and then you want to give them 100% of your time and effort. You don't want to be doing everything and spreading yourself too thin because you won't be able to accomplish that much with that approach. If you're here, it means that your attention span hasn't been destroyed by TikTok yet. So thank you. And as a gift for watching until the end, here's some food for thought. When I started my journey in cybersecurity in 2019, I knew nothing about the field. I mean, I was very good with technology and computers and all that stuff, but I really didn't know anything about cybersecurity at all. And I mean, almost four or five years later, I'm working as a senior offensive security consultant. I hold a master's degree in information security, and I have a bunch of certifications in ethical hacking and penetration testing stuff. And this probably means nothing to you, which I totally understand. But what I want to say is what you do for a living doesn't have to become your identity. And it's very easy for that to happen in cybersecurity in general, because in this field, everything changes at an overwhelming speed. And in order for you to keep up with all the stuff that's happening, you really have to dedicate some of your free time. You have to be learning all the time because it's hard to keep up with stuff. This is a field where people that like to learn and like new challenges and new puzzles will thrive because you will find it exciting and challenging at the same time. But there are also some risks that come with that. Let me give you an example. Many hackers and security researchers have come public saying that they've negligenced their time with their families or friends or they have stopped practicing their hobbies because they started looking at their free time in a different way. Because think about this, five hours of security research and five hours of working on something related to bug bounty, for example, might be equal to a certain amount of dollars if you actually find a bug or if you actually find something in there. And that could make people think that playing Call of Duty with my friends or just having fun with my family on a Sunday that can make that sound like a waste of time in a way, which is not very good and healthy in my opinion. And so my advice to you is to keep that in mind, okay? It's very easy to drown in this field and forget that life exists outside of cybersecurity. So try not to let that happen. Now, if you want to be in the top 1% of cybersecurity professionals and you want to be the best and you're here for the competition and you love what you do, and you get more energy and you get happiness from it, I mean, be my guest. I mean, that's awesome. But for me personally, I have other things that I like to do. I have other hobbies. I like to spend time with my family as well and do other stuff. So totally depends on you. I just wanted to leave that out there for you to understand that in this field, again, it's very, very easy to feel like there's nothing else to do in life but to study and keep learning. And that's not the case. Now, if you're a little bit like me and you enjoy puzzles and you enjoy new challenges and that's something that excites you, I'm sure that cybersecurity will be a great fit for you, especially ethical hacking. And that's pretty much it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I mean, this is some practical advice. This is stuff that I actually did to boost my career in cybersecurity. And I mean, 
I didn't have much to boost at the time, but I really wanted to get it going and to get started in the field. So I did everything I could. And these five steps were the most useful and the things that I, that I think made the most difference in me getting my first opportunity and really thrive in this field. So again, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.